Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. I make SAT math videos. So if you're prepping for your SAT, hit that subscribe button. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about inequalities. I love to teach inequalities because I think um, they look a little bit intimidating, but you really solve them just like any other equation. So if you know how to solve equations, you'll be fine with inequalities. So the basics, sometimes people get confused with the less than and greater than sign. I always teach this using Pac-Man. Think about Pac-Man wanting to eat the bigger number. So in this case, we see the Pac-Man eating the seven. So we have the sign facing the seven, um, the mouth open to the seven. So four is less than seven, right? Um, so let's walk through when you have variables and it's a little bit less tangible. So the first one was X is less than Y. So you have the Y being eaten by the Pac-Man. So X is less than Y is that first one. The second one is reversed. So X is greater than Y. Pac-Man's eating X. So X is greater than Y. When you have a, a less than sign with that line under it, it's less than or equal to, which basically means that the number could be equal to that number or greater than that number. So in this first one, we have X, Pac-Man's eating the Y, so X is less than or equal to Y. So X could be Y or any number less than Y. Um, and the reverse is true. So the thing to remember here is sometimes the SAT uses different wording. So I'm gonna write the wording here. So X is at most Y means the same thing as X is less than Y. So X is at most Y, it could be Y or anything less. Um, in reverse, they might use the wording X is at least Y, basically saying that X is greater than or equal to Y. So at least, the least amount that it could be is starting at that Y. So just become familiar with those two terms because they like to throw them into word problems. Like I said earlier, if you know how to solve an equation, you'll be fine with solving inequalities. So what's the main difference? Well, the difference is when you solve an equation, you get some value for X or you get a few values for X if you have quadratic. With an inequality, your answer is a range. You get a range of numbers. So if you get x is equal to three for an equation, you might get x is greater than three for the solution to an inequality. And so what does that mean? If x is greater than three, then x could be four, five, six, x could be a hundred, a thousand, right? There's an infinite number of solutions for that one. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have x plus nine is equal to 15. You guys know this one. You're just gonna subtract nine from both sides and you get x is equal to six, one solution. Now let's look at an inequality. Here we have x plus nine is greater than or equal to 15. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna solve it the same way. You're gonna subtract nine from both sides and you're gonna get x and you're gonna bring that sign down. x is greater than or equal to six. Anytime you're solving an inequality, I always say, put it on a line graph, actually see it on a line so that you can visualize the range. So I'm gonna plot my point six. I'm gonna put a darkened circle on six because it's inclusive of six, right? X can be greater than or equal to six. So it could be six or it could be more than six, right? So it could be seven, eight, nine. So my range goes in this direction. Okay, so it's one solution versus a range when we're talking about inequalities and equations. So the most important thing to remember, the only difference when you're solving an equation and inequality is you're actually gonna flip the sign if you multiply or divide by a negative. That's the only time you're flipping the sign. Any other time, if you're adding or subtracting a negative, you keep that sign the same. But if you multiply or divide, you flip the sign. So let's look at an example. Here we have a negative 11 is less than negative six X plus one. So I'm gonna get all my numbers to one side, my variables to the other. How do I do that? I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. I'm gonna get negative 11 plus a negative one is negative 12. I'm gonna keep the sign the same since I didn't multiply or divide by a negative, minus six X. Now I wanna isolate X, so I'm gonna divide by a negative six. So here it is, we divided by a negative number. So negative 12 divided by negative six gives me a two. And now I'm flipping that sign. So two is greater than X. And in order for me to visualize that range, I'm gonna put it on a number line. I'm gonna plot my point two. Here I get three, four to give me the positives. What's on the other side? We have a one, a zero, negative one, negative two. Okay, so two is more than X. So X has to be less than two. And can it be two? No, so I'm gonna do an open circle at two and any number less, so this entire range. So it could be negative one, negative three. 
Does that make sense? Hopefully. So how do they actually test this on the exam? So a lot of the times what you'll find is they'll test inequalities by giving you two inequalities in one line like they do here. So how do we read this? Well, this is negative one is less than X and then X is also simultaneously less than or equal to two. I always recommend again, drawing that number line to visualize the range. So what do we see here? So we have a negative one and we know X has to be more than negative one. So I'm gonna do an open circle at negative one because it doesn't include negative one and X can be greater than negative one. Okay, pause. Now X has to also be less than or equal to two. So it could be equal to two and less than two. And that's how I find my range. So your goal for these, when you have two inequalities in one line, is to get X by itself and get two endpoints. So you can see, okay, X is in between these two numbers. So let's look at an example from a real SAT of how they actually test this. So here we have, if zero is less than three X minus two, which is less than one, what is one possible value for X? So like I said, you want to get X in the middle and two endpoints, nothing else next to that X. So here I unfortunately have a three X and a minus two. So let's get rid of that minus two first. How do you do that? Well, basically you're going to add two to each of the numbers, both on both sides. So if I add two, I get zero plus two, which is two is less than three X, which is less than one plus two, which is three. Now I wanna get rid of the three next to the X. So I have to divide three out. But when I divide three, I'm gonna do it by each of the numbers. So I get two thirds is less than X is less than one. Let's plot it to visualize that range. So I have two thirds, so X has to be more than two thirds, but it has to be less than one. So what number is between two thirds and one? Well, two thirds is really 0.6666. If you don't know that, you should know that um, one third is 0.333, so then two thirds is 0.33 times two, which is 0.666. So now my number is has to be between 0.666 and one. Well, I know 0.7 is in between that, and 0.7 can be rewritten as seven over 10. So seven over 10 is one possible value of X, eight over 10 would be another one. Okay, let's look at another one. So here we're given if n can be any integer such that six is less than the square root of n, which is less than 10, what is the difference between the largest possible value of n and the smallest possible value for n? So here, first of all, we're not looking for just n, we're looking for the, the highest possible value of n and the lowest possible value of n, and then we wanna subtract them. So that's first things first, don't circle n. And we're given that square root here, which makes it a little bit more complicated. So on the side, I'm gonna say, if I were to tell you, find n if you, are, if you have this equation, the square root of n is equal to 10, what would you do? Well, you would square both sides in order to get n by itself without that square root, right? So then you get n is equal to 100. Same thing here, we're gonna square that square root of n and we're gonna square the two endpoints in order to just get what are the possible values of n. So if I square the square root of n, I just get n. If I square six and I square 10, I get 36 is less than n, which is less than 100. So now I know that my possible values of n are between 36 and 100, but because we have less than signs without equal to, we know that they're not inclusive of 36 and 100. So my number could be 37 all the way up to 99. Right? So my largest possible value is 99 then, and my smallest possible value is 37. So if you subtract 99 from 37, we get 62, and our answer is D. So a lot of work here. Basically, if you get really good at solving equations, you'll get really good at solving inequalities because you're kind of using the same methods, but you're just rewriting a different sign. So instead of an equal sign in all of these places, we kind of have that um, inequality sign. And what you do to one side, you kind of do with the other. So you're simultaneously solving two equations. Let's look at one more here where we only have one inequality, right? So we're, we're being given, if the inequality above is true for the constant A, which of the following could be the value of X? So I'm looking for X. So, all right, I'm going to try to isolate X just like I do with any other equation. So I'm gonna rewrite 6X plus three is greater than or equal to A. So I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. I get six X is greater than or equal to A minus three. Great, now I'm gonna divide the whole thing by six because I want X by itself. And I get X is greater than, remember when you divide something like this with subtraction, you have to divide each term by six. So I get A over six minus three over six. So X is really bigger than some number A over six minus a half. 
So which of the following answer choices are bigger than a over six minus a half? Just think of a over six as some any random number. Let's say it's y. So x is greater than y minus a half. Which of these is bigger than that? Well, I see that a is basically just that number y. Well, we know that the number y or a over six is always gonna be bigger than a over six subtracted by something, right? A over six subtracted by something is gonna be smaller. And if you look at b and c, you're subtracting a bigger number than a half from those. So you know those are wrong, right? Because negative one, you're subtracting more, right? Minus one instead of minus a half, and minus three instead of minus a half. So in this case, your answer choice is A, because A over six is bigger than A over six minus a half, right? Okay, that's all I have for inequalities. That was a lot, right? But basically, like I said earlier, if you know how to solve an equation, you know how to solve an equality. Be very, very careful when you multiply and divide by a negative, make sure you flip that sign. And if you're working with that one line with two inequalities, just think about X being in between two endpoints. Get X by itself, by just doing the operations to both endpoints. Hope you guys got that. I'm gonna have plenty of more videos. If you have any other topics that you would like me to go over, please comment down below. I'm gonna take a look at the comments and make sure that I'm structuring my lessons to um, what you guys wanna learn. Um, and good luck. Study, study, study. Bye guys.